All right, going to do a video on what is commonly referred to as the change life gospel. Basically, the new birth and spiritual regeneration after salvation. The Holy Ghost comes in and cleans your life up and changes your life. That's what happens at salvation. You get born again, your life changes. You're going to you're going to be a new creature in Christ, like it talks about in 2 Corinthians 5:17. But I'm going to show you some other really good scriptures showing a changed life after salvation. So first, turn to 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 12 to 16. And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer, and a persecutor, and injurious, but I obtained mercy, because I did it ignorantly, in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and, and love, which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Howbeit for this cause I obtain mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them, which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. What's Paul saying there? He had a change after salvation. He was persecuting the church. He was a blasphemer. But he got saved. His life changed. And that changed life is supposed to be a pattern. You know, that Jesus Christ will show, he'll, say, he'll show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them. It's going to be a pattern. You'll have a changed life after salvation. You're persecuting the church. It's going to change. You see, Paul had a changed life after salvation. Paul didn't keep blaspheming after salvation. He had to change life. And he says in verse 16, it'll be a pattern that Jesus Christ will show, uh, which, is, which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. That's a changed life there. Second Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 1 to 3. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it, as, even as it, it is with you that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men for all men have not faith but the Lord is faithful who will establish you and keep you from evil you can trust in God he'll keep you from evil he'll clean your life up make you a new creature keep you from the evil sins evil works of the flesh it's that simple Colossians chapter 1 verses 20 to 23 And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven, and you who were sometimes alienated, who were sometimes alienated, and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled, in the body of his flesh, through death to present you, uh, present you holy and and, bla and unblameable and unreprovable, unreprovable in his sight. If you continue in the faith grounded and settled, and be not moved from the from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, where Paul, I, Paul, am made a minister. You see, you were alienated by your wicked works, but what happens? He reconciled you. You're a new creature in Christ. He quickened you that were dead in trespasses and sins, like it talks about in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 2. You're a new creature in Christ. Your old ways pass away. Colossians chapter 3, verses 5 to 11. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil con conspic conspicuance, and covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things, for sake the wrath of God, cometh on the children of disobedience, in the which ye also walked in some time when ye lived in them. But now ye put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie what not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. For there is neither, neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision or, nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all in all. That's, a, that's simple, and all, it says. It's just that simple. You put off the new man, you're sorry, you put off the old man and put on the new man. There's a change in your life. Now, the most powerful scripture proving that is 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 1 to 5. Turn there. 
First Peter chapter 4, verses 1 to 5. For as much, then, as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves, likewise, of the same mind, for he, has, for he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin, and that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. For in time past of our life uh, suffice, may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles, when we walked in lasciviousness, lust, ex excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries, wherein they think it strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you, who shall give an account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead. Very, very true. When you have a changed life, your old friends are going to think, what happened to you? You're kind of weird now. And they're going to speak evil of you. They're going to think it's strange that, you're not, that you don't run with them to their excesses. And then and well, again, they're going to speak evil of you. They're going to say, wow, you're, you're weird. You're not like us anymore. You're a new creature in Christ. You're a peculiar people like talks about in, in uh, Titus chapter 2. Very, very true of a, of a Christian when you have a changed life. You see, in time past, you walked according to lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, abominable idolatries. But when that change comes in, they're going to think it's strange that you're not like them anymore. They're going to speak evil of you. Very, very probable scripture is showing a changed life after salvation. What happened to Paul when he had that changed life? His old friends that were, you know, among the Pharisees, they were trying to kill him. That's how much they hated him. That's how much they spoke evil of him. You read in Acts chapter, I believe it's verse 23, they literally, or I think it's verse 20, Acts chapter 21, I do apologize, I believe it's Acts 21, uh, they literally, set, they literally um, set upon themselves a curse that they would not eat or drink till they killed Paul. So they hated him because he had that changed life after salvation. It's that simple. When you, when you get saved, your life will change. You'll be a new creature in Christ. It could take years of sanctification. I'm not saying it'll be overnight. It could take years and years and years of sanctification from the Holy Spirit. And you do have, and you will still sin. You have a body of flesh. You have a body, you have two natures, like it talks about in Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 and 17. But you're going to have a changed life. Okay, you won't have the same desires. It will be different for every person. I'm not saying it will be some carbon copy change. It will be different. But sanctification will kick in. So, wanted to point that out. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.